Well, tomorrow marks a solemn anniversary, one year since the Hamas attack on Israel. More than 1,200 people were killed and hundreds more taken hostage. What's played out since the attack is a growing war in the Middle East with thousands more dead. Tonight, our David Amelotti is speaking with the local Jewish community about the impact of the violence and their hopes for the future. <laughs> a simple game of Uno for parents Eric and Amy to check in on their children, Aiden and Aaron. Plus eight, Mom. As this interfaith St. Louis County family navigates a difficult year, Eric uh, is Jewish. What has this year been like for you and your family? I have family living in Israel, so they were obviously directly impacted, uh, having to be in the bomb shelters and those types of things, and uh, their friends being murdered. Uh, for us here, though, it's been very similar to kind of a 9-11. It's heartbreaking. It's, it's sad. It's especially eye-opening for his yeah. wife, yeah. who is Christian. We all know that just because what's going on there is not actually relevant to who they are as people. It's not them, but they're being seen in a different light now. The children say their experience at school has changed. I do sometimes feel like I have to hide myself because, well, I don't know how other people feel and I don't want to ruin the chances of making good friends. Aaron's older sister, Aiden, says it's been a tough start to her high school experience. I just wish that people wouldn't jump to conclusions so soon because I always get to know people before anything else and I know who they are as a person. With the recent increase of school threats across St. Louis, this family fears they could be targets. It's why they're even taking steps to make their Jewish faith less visible. But how do we allow the kids to present themselves? Where they're wearing a, a Israeli hat, which we no longer let my son wear, or uh, my daughter wearing her IDF uh, hoodie, you know, those types of things. Me wearing a kippah, you know, when I'm out and about. Those are the types of things that we've kind of stopped doing um, just out of fear that we don't want to start any conflict. Their fears, according to a new report, may be justified. Just this week, the Anti-Defamation League released new data tracking the top 10 trends post-October 7th last year. It includes explicit support for terror and systematic denial, distortion, and minimization of the attacks of Jewish suffering. New data from the ADL Heartland shows a 316% rise in anti-Semitism in Missouri since October 7th. In the last 12 months, at least 133 incidents in the Show Me State meet its criteria as anti-Semitic. That number is expected to rise while staff works through a large volume of reports. It's a dramatic increase from the 22 reported cases in 2022. To capture a broader understanding of where the local Jewish community stands, I sat down with four rabbis from across the greater St. Louis area to learn their congregation's journey, including Rabbi Andrea Goldstein, who serves hundreds of families here at Sher Emeth. We are getting a bit better. <laughs> it's like a learning curve um, in terms of um, allowing a diversity of opinion within the Jewish community about how um, people are viewing the conflict. Um, there is a diversity of opinion. She says she doesn't feel threatened by anti-Semitism day by day, but she has members who have experienced threats for their beliefs. I believe that it is incumbent upon us as humans to be able to um, not rank our pain or compare our pain, but acknowledge that so many peoples are suffering right now. Rabbi Moshe Shulman leads an Orthodox synagogue in University City. Many of my of my congregants are in Israel right now for the high holidays. He says his congregation is seeing a surge of young people taking a gap year or pursuing their college education in Israel, feeling that's a safer option. The rabbi's own son feeling compelled to serve in the Israeli military. To a very large extent, we're feeling very disappointed in the climate of the country that has so quickly forgotten what this is about. Um, the rise of anti-Semitism across the country and on college campuses, the, the, the protests against, the, against Israel and against the war, which have turned into protests in favor of or support of Hamas, which is a terrorist organization, or now in support of Hezbollah, which is another terrorist organization. Still top of mind, some rabbis say, are the hostages taken captive a year ago. A year later, we still have more than 100. Last year, Rabbi Jeffrey Abraham of Congregation B'nai Amuna placed a picture of each 251 Israeli hostages on the back of the seats in the synagogue. There isn't a clear path to how we get these hostages home. Uh, and the sense of 
will we ever get them home? Since then, he describes life as an emotional roller coaster and says his message this Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, is unity among Jews and a call to action for allies in St. Louis to speak up. Just because you might disagree with something the Israeli government is choosing to do does not mean you have a right to attack an individual Jewish person here in St. Louis or anywhere around the world. Uh, and, and that's what we've been seeing with this huge uptick in anti-Semitism. We have to lean in. We have to lean in, we have to be proud and stand tall and come together. And when the world sees that, um, they respect us more. That is Rabbi Chaim Landa, who says the Jewish community of 5,000 in St. Charles County in 2014 has now tripled. So this is our big tent. Yeah, we're, we're growing, we're expanding. He and his family will host 150 Jews for Rosh Hashanah in this space, while their community awaits construction to begin on the first synagogue in the county. People are asking, what's our response to everything going on in Israel? What can we do? Rabbi Landa even going to so, social media to encourage all, Jews to celebrate and speak out this high holiday. This Jewish New Year is different. We have to stand up and stand up with what's right. And, and you're saying standing up against terrorist groups. You're not advocating for the killing of innocent lives, uh, of, innocent Palestinians. Of, of course not. Of course not. I, I, am, I am advocating to stopping this type of evil from spreading, from continuing, from spreading and from innocent lives being lost. And for Eric Nelson, that work begins inside the home. And I think conversations that are starting to be had now, that's really the hope of the future, and I think that's really a great thing. We heard it a few times, a call for unity for Jews in St. Louis to stand up, lean into their faith. The Jewish Federation of St. Louis now plans to host a one-year commemoration of attacks on Israel on Monday, October 7th, to show solidarity with each other and Jews around the world and the hostages held by Hamas. It's slated to start at 7 p.m. And for more information, you can call the number here on your screen, 314-432-0020. Now, there is another side to this conflict, a community impacted by the October 7th attacks and what's transpired in the last year. It's been difficult to document the Palestinian experience in St. Louis. We're told more now than ever they are scared to speak up and nervous to speak with us. One Palestinian woman, Naveen Ayesh, did agree to speak with us this week about what her community is facing and the bias she sees with media coverage of the ongoing conflict. I think it's blatant racism and a way to uh, excuse uh, Israel's atrocities. You know, they're labeling everybody that they are killing as terrorists. A lot of people within my community, including myself, have lost family and friends in the last year. Now, according to Reuters, on October 1st, Palestinian health authorities say Israel's actions in Gaza have killed more than 41,000 people. Other reports say between war and a polio outbreak that's followed, the death toll could reach 330,000 lives by December. In studio, David Amelotti, First Alert 4.